Lovely stuff. So, thank you, as we said, for joining us tonight. Um, this is really exciting for me because most of you that I've spoken to will know that I've only been in post for a few months so far. Um, so I'm the Equality and Inclusion Officer, Millie, um, at SXFA, and um, I take a, a role, a lead role in, in the disability pathway um, in Essex, making sure that there's opportunities for everyone um, going forward. Um, joins with by Andy, who's our coach education, and Lawrence, and John Coles, who is our National Development Officer for the Disability Pathway. Um, and we'll be running tonight's session with the help of Luke um, from Bado Spartec, who um, has, has spent a few years um, running their ability sessions down there and we'll be contributing further through the session and um, some real life experience um, and, and talking from a different perspective to us lot. Um, next slide please Andy. Perfect. So what, how we're going to start tonight is that we just want to make sure everyone knows um, sort of what's going on in Essex disability wise. So tonight's session is, is mainly about ensuring that you're all aware of what's going on and um, ensuring that going forward, we're giving you the um, development opportunities within the disability pathway um, that you require to, to ensure the growth and development of disability football. Um, we'll cover a few different areas, so I will start with what's going on in Essex. Um, and then we'll go on to other areas such as the national perspective, um, a, a real life example, and then some coaching and we'll open up as a, an open discussion. So if you do have any questions um, throughout the session, please pop your hand up. Um, we'll keep an eye on the um, anyone with their hand up as we go through and we'll try and answer your questions and when we come to the end of each section or um, when we open the session up at the end. Um, I know there were some people who put some questions onto the form when they registered so thank you for those and we'll try and include those throughout the sessions or feel free to ask them again um, when we get to any open session sections further along the line. So kicking off today um, with what's going on in Essex is our disability pathway in general. So I'm just going to talk us through what we've going on. As you can see on, on the screen, we've got um, different options at the moment, which are, are growing and developing massively since um, since the pandemic. Um, before COVID, um, I obviously wasn't, wasn't part of it, but I'm aware that there was a, a thriving disability um, section with both youth and adult leagues. However, um, since COVID, obviously things are, things are having to grow again and, and, and return to football um, with the disability pathway being hit the hardest. So we're, we're in a position at the moment to, to really kick on and, and start to, to bring things back to life and, and really engage with, with the local uh, community. So our main sort of adult league um, we have is the Soccerability League. Um, and this is run um, at the moment um, from once in events once a month so there's three different divisions um, playing at different abilities um, from um, all the way down to just everyone that wants to have fun um, and they play one Saturday a month in a in a tournament round robin style um, throughout the season playing um, against each other with a great great standard of football and, and lots of happy smiling faces uh, this is looking to develop we're looking to have two leagues so it'll be north and south running Colchester and running south end um, allowing more opportunities than ever for um, players to, to participate in more football and there are some open op opportunities to volunteer within the Soccerability League at the moment in terms of committee positions and vol event volunteers um, and that, that is a great um, option for, for clubs looking to develop adult soccerability um, or adult disability um, offers. Um, in terms of youth provisions, um, we don't have a current youth league um, in terms of soccerability. However, this is something we are looking to, to develop, as I know there was one previously. At the moment, this may look like um, over the coming season, some festivals um, to sort of grow the appetite for a league and then once we've got the provisions there and the ability to, to start up a league, we'll be looking to offer um, a, a permanent sort of st league structure in the same way that the adult league runs. Um, again, if, if you're a club member looking to, um, or a club committee member looking to start disability football, uh, the youth, just because there isn't a league, isn't somewhere to look away from because this is a part, a time to be part of a growing um, development and, and a, a great chance to not be sort of jumping in at the deep end because you'll be, growing with us at the same time so your sessions will come from being able to take part in in sort of startup festivals and and creating a network 
Um, we also have a para hub, which is a talent hub that runs um, through Disability for Sport. Um, they offer um, opportunities for impairment specific players, um, but John will discuss that a bit in a bit more um, detail um, in terms of the pathway. Um, however, this is this is an opportunity for this is an opportunity for players um, impairment specific. So um, to to experience that progression, gain some extra coaching um, and ultimately reach the, reach their dreams um, of playing football. And then we are looking to develop um, some more impairment specific options within um, Essex. So the power chair and the frame football. We currently offer a frame football session through um, Sporting Pillars um, and we're looking to develop a power chair session. There is an expression of interest out for the power chair session at the moment with the um, hope of being able to um, sort of progress to sessions um, um, in the near future. So if anyone's got any questions on what's going on, please feel free to ask them um, towards now or towards the end. Lovely stuff. So I'm going to hand over to John um, for this section. He's going to talk through more of a national picture. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for coming uh, on this evening. Uh, just to, to repeat um, Millie's introduction, my name is Jonathan Coles. I'm the National Development Officer with the FA for Disability Football and Disability Pathway. Um, I understand that a lot of people on this call, um, well, there may be a varying um, background of disability football, maybe clubs that are looking at it from uh, really fresh eyes for the first time, maybe looking to include it within your sections and those who maybe already have disability football running in the clubs or maybe like Luke, who is part of the league and been going for for a long time. All I want to kind of do is try and give you a picture of what disability football actually looks like nationally. So just for 30 seconds and feel free to use the chat function to put some of your thoughts down here. In your mind, when you think of disability football, what does it actually look like? So um, feel free to write it down. Feel free to use the chat function. Just want you to really think about what disability football actually looks like, what you think it looks like, because from some of the discussions that I have with people across the country, what they think disability football looks like and what it actually is are two different things. So I'm just going to share a very quick video and I understand videos aren't always the best on team. So hopefully this comes out well, but I'm only going to show about a minute and a half of it about a typical disability football league that runs nationally um, in, in Devon, this example is. So hopefully everybody can see that. Um, yeah, I don't know if I shared the sound. Sorry, there would be two seconds. Let me do that one more time. Start that back. <laughs> the Devon Disability Gangs League is the only disability league in Devon and um, is uh, available for players with learning disabilities, mental health, uh, deaf. We've got two deaf people playing at the moment. Um, possibly sighted at all different impairments and we've got different ability levels, Prem 1, Prem 2 here. We've got other pitches with League 1 and League 2 players with more severe learning dis disabilities, dance and drones. But yes, yeah, a fantastic league. It's growing every season. We've got 44 teams this year, which is fantastic. We've got ladies division. I think what people have to realise is it's not about disability, it's about various abilities as such and everybody's given the opportunity to go and play football and as you can see looking around today everybody's got a smile on their face everybody's enjoying it so i'm just going to stop it there it does go on a little bit longer but my my hopefully some of the things that you were seeing there is is disability football really does look a lot like mainstream football uh, and that's really kind of the the message that I'm trying to get out there is um, that we have over 2,000 affiliated disability teams in England, and about 80% of those teams play pan disability football, which is where a team comes together with with a lot of different disabilities, and most of those teams playing in one of 36 leagues that look just like this. And one of those 36 leagues is the Soccerability League that runs in it runs in Essex. So I'm I'm hopeful that some of the, uh, the the visions that you had about disability football 
maybe being too difficult to get up and running or very specialist equipment or needing specialist facilities is actually in the vast majority of cases, 80% of, of um, football played in this country, disability football, is simply not the case. A grass field, the same things that you need to run your own teams is exactly the same for a disability team as well. The other 20% is 10% of that is what we would call disability rec, which I know we go into a little bit more detail later in this presentation. And the other 10% is something what we call impairment specific. Um, so England has seven, um, England disability international teams, uh, so blind, partially sighted, deaf, cerebral palsy, frame, power chair, and I'm sure there's one I've forgotten there as well, um, but they all have England teams and that's what we mean by impairment specific, where players with the same impairment play together. In a lot of cases, there isn't uh, the number of players to make an impairment specific team, so they play pan disability football. Um, so again, that's all I wanted to get across here. That hopefully disability football isn't this really scary subject. Um, it, it, it's really something that is is played widely, uh, widely across the country and it looks just a lot like football. The other aspect of what happens nationally outside the grassroots game, which is predominantly where I work, is also the talent pathway. So um, within disability football, those uh, those players that do have talent have the opportunity to play for England in amputee, blind, CP, deaf, partially sighted and power chair. Um, there is, they're all male teams, there is a female deaf team and excitingly there is now a female blind team and a female cerebral palsy team. We would like to have female amputee and partially sighted teams. Unfortunately at this point there's actually nobody to play. So, so England is one of the um, the countries that strive in disability football the most nationally, uh, internationally, and as other countries catch up to where we are, we will introduce those teams as well. So the talent pathway looks a lot like that. Most players who enter the talent pathway would come to something called an England Talent Day, which is a one day, um, basically a scouting trial, if you will, where players can come in and get seen by England coaches. So it'd be in one of those impairment specifics that's listed there. And um, if they were successful at that England Talent Day, they would be invited into a talent hub. And from there, it progressively goes up. Generally, as players get older, there's regional emergent talent program and then the national emergent talent program. So each step, players are identified from the step below and eventually they reach the England under 21s. So that's where the talent pathway ends because once you get to the England 21s, if you're successful, you would then play international football uh, and be part of the England national setup. So um, players that enter this TAF pathway could be playing disability football, but they are much more um, or, or, or quite equally likely to be playing in mainstream football. So if you do have mainstream teams, you may have players that would qualify um, for one of those impairment specific teams. And all I could say there is if you do have a mainstream player that would class themselves with CP, deaf, maybe even partially sighted, to attend your local England Talent Day, or if they're older than the age of 16, is to get in touch with your county FA, because they will be also be able to get them into potentially the talent pathway um, just at a, a higher level. Um, blind and power chair does is less likely to be in mainstream football for quite obvious reasons, but there is England teams there. So if you do have talented power chair players or blind players, still get in touch with your uh, county FA or come to an England talent day um, to to hopefully enter that talent pathway as well. So um, hopefully that kind of really briefly describes what's happened nationally and I will hand back to Millie to take over from me. Amazing, thank you John. Um, I think just as um, we spoke about it's um, it's a perfect uh, opportunity just to get an insight um, of when you start a disability team it, it doesn't just have to be a grassroots um, set up there are players that can go um, much much further and and there is a pathway there for them so um, starting up a, a disability setup um, th there's prospects there um, to go much further and just having that awareness 
um, could potentially lead to one of your players playing for England um, in the future or the near future. And that in itself is, is hugely exciting um, and should be sort of cascaded down through all the teams. I think Just the next slide... To oh, me, yeah, carry sorry. on, no, carry on Donna. For each of those impairment-specific uh, England teams, is there is a national league as well. So there are impairment-specific teams that play in a national league. Um, and so the National Amputee League, National Blind League and, and, and things like that. So whilst grassroots pan-disability football is the most prevalent in the country, um, there are opportunities to start impairment-specific teams as well and enter uh, national leagues on that side as well. Just wanted to add that. Perfect. I think the next side is actually yourself as well, John. <laughs> is it? OK, sorry. No worries. It's, so I mentioned that 10 percent of um, disability football nationally, which represents kind of about 2000 players, is what we call disability rec uh, or recreation disability rec. So you may have heard of the mainstream programmes, Just Play um, and Squad and Wildcats. There are disability specific sessions within each of those programmes. For the age groups that aren't kind of reflected by Wildcats, Squad and Just Play, we have something called England Football Disability Rec Centres, which still allows that recreational element still to, to, be, um, to be captured and to run. Um, yeah, basically it's, it's a way for all the age groups, male or female, to continue to play, to play football, just less formally. And if you want to see an, um, what an example of a disability rec um program looks like we have another very short video um which again i don't think i shared my screen my sound so let me just do that quickly and hopefully this is a good example of a just disability just place Cobblestonians is a football club started in 1973 and now we've got a thriving sort of 44 team, something like now. So basically it's all about offering a pathway for the whole community. So that's, uh, you know, the boys, girls, men, women, able and disabled to be able to play the, the game we all love to play. Today is our Snickers Protein Just Play session. These guys starting this up made it really easy for people to go online, find football, put in their postcode and find a session that is perfect for them. People with disabilities might have mobility issues or just not have the confidence to get out, whereas actually they come to these sessions, make friends, meet like-minded people. It gives them a, a whole structure, a whole community. It's not just about the football, it's about the mental, the social, physical sides of it as well, which is, after the pandemic and things, is even more important now than it ever was. It's like a rainbow, you know, you've got people from different ends of either condition and you don't look at the disability in this game, you just look at them as a unique human being. And that's what I love about this group, you know, we're all different, we've all got different backgrounds, but we're here to just put that all aside and just enjoy football and playing together. I love football and what I do day in, day out. Obviously, trying to get out and play as much as I can before my body goes. Now you're at your tunnel, you've got to quit. Do that, it does it now, but I don't listen to it. I get to dive and fall over and make great saves and pull it off. But actually, I just fell over and the ball happened to be there. So, so it, it's great fun. This is special to me because this is what football is about. These guys turn up just for the love and the passion of football. They want to make friends and they just have a good time and they all leave with a smile on their face. And for me, there's no better feeling than being able to say people have had the chance to play football and we've made it happen. I hope that came through. I uh, Hopefully that came through well, but um, yeah, it's important to know that disability players also um, might only want to play recreational football, play informal. So those opportunities do exist. And as a club, if you don't want to go down the affiliated route and into um, leagues that just play and things like that do exist for disability sessions and there's disability specific sessions to look at as well. So um, hopefully, again, that just gives you a good idea of some different options that are out there and what these sessions look like. And another common question I often get from teams looking to start is a scared, is a fear of players getting hurt. As you can see, the goalkeeper there, it, players do know what they're, they're doing and um, want to get involved. And it's much better to have that opportunity for them to play and to choose whether to play affiliate football or disability rep than not have the opportunity at all. And unfortunately, in some geographic areas, 
players don't have that opportunity to play right now. So we really want to address those issues. So hopefully that's OK and I can hand back to Millie. Lovely. Thanks. Thanks, John. Um, we've just got up on the screen some um, some opportunities, sort of national opportunities that are going on at the moment. Um, obviously, the regional talent days that John's just discussed, um, uh, the date is post, post dated, unfortunately. But um, this is just an example of what the sort of time is um, and, and when these events come out. So as you can see, we've recently just had a regional talent day, um, which covers all of the southeast. Now, these won't always be in Surrey. These will be in different locations each time. Um, so when these opportunities come up, please um, recommend players, get them sent out. Um, get in touch with myself um, or anyone um, at the uh, County FA or with, with someone at, at the National FA um, who, who you can find the details online for and um, just inquire about it and, and register and, and see if the, there's eligibility is correct and, and, and go and make the most of these opportunities that are there for the players. Um, the other other um, opportunities we've got on the screen, uh, the, probably the most important one that, that most people will be looking at is that sported funding, the £500, um, and this is for affiliated football. So if you're a team um, that or a club that have a disability team um, affiliated um, and you're, or you're looking to start a um, an affiliated team, um, there is a £500 funding. Now you can find out more about um, this um, through through some links I can send you. Um, this is for England football accredited clubs. Now it's looking to start up um, a, a new provisions, um, inclusive provisions. So with the aim of sort of having a session off the ground in, in the next however many months. Um, so if, 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 if it's funding that you're struggling to, to, to get in, in touch with, again, it's something you can get in touch with us and we can, we can help you look for. Or there is... Uh, this sported funding which is there at the moment and you can get get in touch with them and see if you're um, able to to access that. Uh, we do have a disability coach mentors program nationally. Um, this has got nine current mentors if I'm correct, um, correct me if I'm wrong for anything here John, um, and this will hopefully be expanding um, in, this, in the future um, with the successes that may come forward. Um, once this gets underway this we, we sort of ha are able to um, clubs receive coach so on the grass um, face to face sort of um, support for their coaches uh, in disability football for starting new provisions again when this when this expands and we can offer um, some more support and um, the disability coach mentors will be a, a sort of a great um, addition alongside the the work that we're hoping to do this season and there are upcoming opportunities um, John was it the the training that's coming this season yeah, so um, off field support, um, there is some training that, that's coming to to support those clubs looking to start disability football for the, the first time. There is also going to be some on field support that's coming to supplement the disability coach mental program with a, a, a coaching disabled footballers um, coaching certificate, both online and in person. So, um, yeah, there's there's quite a comprehensive support package that a lot of it's being launched this season for the first time. Which is super exciting. And again, as things start to roll out, um, anyone that signed up for tonight or continues to get in touch with us will be able to send this out um, directly to you. And, and we will be utilising our social media and our communications channels to be sharing these in, um, opportunities with you. So when they do come up and you see that email in your inbox, make sure you click on it and have a read. See if you're some interested in it um, and make the most of what, what's coming through for the next season, uh, because this is a great time for that development. Lovely. So we're going to ask Luke um, from Bado Spartek um, to just come on and, and have a talk to you all about their, their journey. Um, Luke's about to enter the first team into the Soccerability League. So this is really from the from the beginning story, um, just for five minutes to talk through the challenges and um, the, the barriers that are faced in setting up a Soccerability team from someone who's already done that. Um, and then once we've finished, we'll ask Luke some questions. And if anyone's got any, any specifics um, for Luke specifically, then we, we can go over for those but thank you Luke. No worries, hi, so, hi I'm Luke from, um, from Bado Spartak in Chelmsford. Um, I've come from a uh, mainstream youth football background doing my uh, son and stepson's team through from under 10s up to uh, under 18s. About four years ago when they got to under 18s and they were all going off into either adult football or university or whatever um, 
was a bit of a loss for, for what to do. Um, quite by chance, I read a piece um, on an Essex News site about um, Basildon Sockability and a guy down there called John Smith. Um, sounded really, really, really interesting. Um, there was a piece about 22,500 kids in um, in Essex that are registered with either a special need or a, or a disability um, and not any or hardly any provision for them to play football. So I got in touch with John, went down to see John, um, joined in on one of their Saturday morning coaching sessions and just had a, a an absolutely fabulous time. Um, it was, really was football at its absolute purest. Um, John put me in touch with the FA at, at the Essex FA uh, with Cindy Chatter. Uh, went and met Cindy um, and went back to my club, Bado Spartak, and said, look, you know, there's, there's nothing in Chelmsford for, for kids with, a, with, a, with special needs or, or disabilities. Can we do something here? And the club said, yeah, absolutely. You know, fill your boots, you know. You 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 run with it. We'll with, with, we'll back you with whatever you want to do. So what I really wanted to do was to bring um, the opportunity for for anyone to be able to play football, but within a mainstream environment. So you know, as you can see, you know, in the in the picture on the right, um, the, the the kids in our soccerability teams are are wearing exactly the same kit as the kids in all the mainstream teams. So they are they are. You know, on a Saturday morning, they are just another team over at Bado Spartak training on the fields amongst um, all the other teams. Uh, to get it off the ground, um, the FA really helped us with um, with with flyers. So I wrote to every um, every school and uh, special needs or disability type organisations with sort of within the area, within, you know, Chelmsford and its surrounding area, you know, saying what we wanted to do and we were going to have a start date of um, Saturday, the 5th of June 2018, I think it was. Um, please get this message out there, you know, anyone come down 10 o'clock, you know, we'll be there. Uh, and after, I think after about six weeks, I had um, six people inquire. Uh, about wanting to come down, didn't hear back from a single school or organisation. Um, didn't get to get through to anyone, um, you know, the, the, the SEN officers on the on the phone either. But anyway, by by the by the Friday night before our first session, we had six confirmed coming. Uh, woke up on the Saturday morning um, to another six confirmed coming. So for the first session, we had 12 kids turn up ages ranging between um, 8 and 15 and we had just the most enjoyable hour of football. We played some, you know, silly, silly games and then, you know, moved it into into little matches trying to, you know, pair, um, you know, ages and sizes and abilities and whatever together. But what was what was really clear was was the um, was the fun. That people were having um, and it wasn't just the kids that were having fun it was the parents and carers on the sidelines as well you could see the fun they were having and when we got to the, got to the end of the session everyone was like when we you know is, is, is this going to be every week when, when when's the next one when's the next one and you know we really knew we had something there that um, we needed to run with um, so we you know, we, we set up and, and, you know, from from then on, every Saturday, um, bar if I'm on holiday, um, you know, we, we've been over there. Um, our numbers have grown now from that, that first week with, with 12. We've now got about 35 kids um, signed on. Don't get all of 35 every week. Probably get anywhere between 22 and 26 each week. But we've we've had to now... Um, split it into three sessions, so we do two sessions from ten to eleven, and then a, then a third one from eleven to twelve. Um, the one of the, I think one of one of the hardest things we've we've come across is probably is probably funding, um, and help with that. 
in in the beginning we had some great help from the FA um, where we, we got a, a grant um, to use over two years and that included some um, equipment as well that included you know the footballs and bibs and cones and, and, and whatnot um, but one of the things we found um, because we didn't know what type of um, young person we were get, we were going to be getting is it's actually um, worked out that we've the, in the, probably in the majority we we have um, young people with autism as I'm, and as I'm sure you're all aware once the wind and the rain starts that becomes um, a real barrier for, for for getting these young people outside so what we really needed was funding for um, an indoor uh, venue for the winter um, so we were able to use a grant that we got from the FA um, that, that actually covered us for two winters um, and we hire a, 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 an absolutely wonderful facility over at um, Baddow High School, which is a you know a be beautiful surface inside a inside a tented um, dome. Um, but now now I need some more <laughs> I need some more money from somewhere for uh, for for this winter that's coming up and you know and, and probably a little bit more than last time because you know I need I need two hours now not not just the hour. Um, we're entering our so so we so we started off with with um, with with kids sort of eight to fifteen, but now some of those fifteen year olds are eighteen and nineteen. So we've we've quite naturally morphed into um, into adult soccerability as well, um, of, of which we're we're entering a team into the soccerability league for next season. Um, in the last three years, there's a few more clubs have sprung up. In and around the area, we've been able to go and and play mini tournaments and little festivals um, with with those with those clubs, and it's and it's been a real opportunity to uh, sort of push our push our kids a little bit, take them out of their comfort zones, um, and they've all em embraced it massively. Uh, and and I continuously continuously get asked, when's the next one? When's our next match? Who are we who are we playing next time? Um, so you know it's a it, it's a fantastic journey to go on um, and there's such a big opportunity uh, not you know, not just in Essex but you know across the country and across the world for um, being able to provide a provision for for young people to go and do something that you know they love doing you know if you if you're a, a, a mainstream child you know particularly for example in a place like Chelmsford there's probably 20 clubs within the area that you could uh, pick and choose to go and play for. But if you've got a special need or a, or a, or a disability, your your options are really, really limited. Um, and we, you know, we need to get the message out there and, and get as many other clubs on board um, doing this alongside us to just create as, as many opportunities as we can for these young people because they deserve, um, you know, quite rightly, exactly the same as 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 everyone else amazing thank you luke my pleasure can you just um describe to us a little bit about the tactics you use to um, engage with coaches um, i think something that i regularly get asked is about coaching structure in terms of number of coaches to players um, and ensuring that the ratio is correct so can you just talk to us a little bit about that please yeah so um so when i when i started on that first session so we had 12 12 kids the first session and there was myself um, uh, and three other coaches and we quick quickly realized that that wasn't enough um, and we you know I think as a minimum you need to try and you need to try and get yourself to one coach for for two kids because you you can you know quite often get a kid that will actually need one on one for the complete hour so what I did was I opened it up to um, all the teams within Bado Spartak and what was my previous kids team within Bado Spartak and said, <clears throat> does anyone want to come along on a Saturday morning and help coach? Um, and all, all they really need to do is come along and, you know, join in, play football, guide where necessary, challenge where necessary. 
um, and I've now got a, probably about I've got a pool of about 20 um, that will come along regularly. So so from that pool, I might get I might get 12, I might get 18 on a Saturday morning, but it but it ensures that I'm, I'm covered um, numbers wise to, you know, to ensure that the, the, the kids taking part have a, you know, first off a fun session, um, but most importantly, a safe session as well. Um, another thing I did was I wrote to um, and got in touch with a couple of the local schools and said, if you're doing Duke of Edinburgh, um, you, why don't you send why don't you send kids down um, to do this as part of the Duke of Edinburgh? So I've got I've got four coaches that regularly help on a Saturday now that are doing it for the Duke of Edinburgh award. Amazing, thank you. And does anyone else have any questions I'd like to ask Luke um, whilst we're here? Millie, it's Derek Pearson from Hashtag United. Um, either a question Hi, Derek. for yourself or Luke, really. Um, as you know, it's our first season into disability football, um, and we've now got 22 um, mixed ages. And the question really is, how does how Luke cope with the mixed mixed age group in terms of the occasional fixture you know are there teams out there that are willing to to play across and I'll give you an example where we've got nine nine years our youngest to 21 the eldest mm. uh, but it, there wouldn't be enough just to say right we'll go we'll, we'll take two or three into adult football and leave the rest behind so I just wonder what's the flexibility around for you know uh, friendly games really of course oh, just it, just from an NFA point of view, sorry, Luke, I'll just just cover. Yeah. So age boundings in the disability section have a four year age banding, um, unlike in mainstream where it's much smaller. So traditional um, in terms of the league structure, if you were to enter a team into an affiliated sort of um, team, they could be open age, under 16s, under 12s and under 8s. Um, so that's the, the general structure that most teams tend to take up. Um, but I will let Luke just sort of talk about his experience with um, different age groups. Um, that, uh, that that one's really been quite easy, where we've um, where we've played in mini festivals with teams like um, Basildon, which are now Billericay, Sockability, um, Porters, Whitton, etc. You no no one has the exact numbers <coughs> for each age group, um, and everyone is quite happy for you know a, a couple from another age group to to join in to make up the numbers. Um, Within that, you know, it's it's um, it's only about having fun and making sure that everyone has the opportunity to participate. And I think every club is is um, is is like minded in that in that approach. Obviously, going into the into the adult soccer ability league, that would be com you know that would be completely different. You would you would only have um, anyone. 16 and over within that but as far as all the all the mini tournaments and festivals go it's all completely open we were down at porters a couple of months ago um and i didn't have enough for um my adult age group and everyone was quite happy for me to stick a couple of coaches on the pitch um and you know just give them a couple of rules like you know one coach went in goal but he couldn't save with his hands and, and another one was out on the was out on pitch but he wasn't allowed to shoot etc and you know every, everyone's happy to let everyone participate no matter what okay thank you lovely thank you Sorry. for that can i can i ask the question please if possible it's it's tony from uh uh i've on just a part of a grassroots coach in uh, the west essex tigers uh, and we're very keen on uh, getting our dis dis disability football section up and running. Uh, we've had great support so far from the FA, which is really encouraging. Uh, and I'm just a grassroots coach, very similar to story, so, uh, story to yourselves with children going through the, the boys section, the girls section, etc. Uh, one thing that kind of scares me, if you like, is getting different disabilities where you might have someone with autism and someone with a physical dis disability playing on the same pitch and and that would really kind of concern me I don't know how have you ever come across that and, and how do you approach it and and stop any conflicts if you like 
Um, I think I think the I, I completely understand where you're coming from because I think I had that same fear. But I think the, the kids um, they they find their they find their levels. Um, you you'll you'll find you know you might have the you know the, the biggest strongest kid on the team. He he'll recognise um, maybe a smaller and weaker one, and and naturally back away. Or if you have got or you have got a, a you know a smaller and weaker child, you you know using your using your coaches the, you know there are ways to you know like shield them a bit I suppose if you like. But you, you know where where are you based, Tony? Uh, we're based in Hongchurch, which is kind of West Essex on the borders of London, really. Why don't, why don't you come up to to Bado one Saturday morning? That, that and, would be, uh, oh, that would be my next and, question. And you know, just just come and get get involved in the session, and you and you'll see what I mean on how it on how it sort of works itself out. Um, I, I completely understand you. It, it, it does sound scary, doesn't it? But it's actually not. It it just seems to work. Yeah, no, actually, if, 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 if yeah, I mean, that would be great. I'll, I'll get in touch with you kind of separately. If that's all right. Yeah, please, yeah. Your, your contact details and then, uh, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be excellent. excellent. Could, could I just add on on a little bit? I, I coach three pan disability teams and within one of my teams, I have uh, about nine players in total. Uh, six of them are autistic. Two of them have CP and one of them is partially sighted. So um, it's very common um that's pan disability is made up of all of those because we don't have enough players in abingdon and oxfordshire where i run my team to have a cp team or my partially side player is the only partially sighted player who plays in the league so the it i know it's concerned but it as uh luke mentioned it does just kind of work and unfortunately if, if luke doesn't run his session that player cannot play mainstream football um for probably social reasons or Physically, the game's too fast for them. So it's it is something that will work its way out. Unfortunately, sometimes players um, aren't right for that environment, and that's fine. That's where Essex FA come in, come in, and potentially we try them with a different team where the ability may be lower, or the game might be slower, or they may have to play impairment specific sport. So um, there are other options, but it is very common. Completely get it. Um, the really important thing to know is that you know your players what they can do potentially what they can't do um and, and making sure within that session that you run that they they still have that opportunity for success so within our session cp football so my my one of my cp play football loves the game but even within pan disability football it's still quite fast so we've worked an adaption where he gets three seconds on the ball before anyone can um tackle him so referee or a coach would chat three after that Hopefully he's passed the ball on, he's made some progress and things like that. So it's finding those kind of ways to include everybody in a session. Um, and, and that's just one example of what we do in, in our pan disability sessions. I'd I just like to say I completely ag ag agree with that. That's how, you know very similar to how it works, you know, with, within ours and it and it does just work for them. Lovely stuff. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what we'll do is if anyone's got any further questions, we'll open um, any extra bits up at the end. Um, and what we'll do now is we'll just go into the coaching area with Andy. Um, and then once we've completed the coaching section, we'll open up into a discussion for any further points and what we'd like what you'd like us to support with going forward. Thanks, Millie. Can you hear us all right? Yeah, all good, Andy. Brilliant. Cheers. Sorry, I had a bit of a delay on my end. Um, firstly, Luke, great to hear about your experiences. Um, really refreshing and hopefully uh, give a few people that have joined us some confidence to to go and, and, and do their thing in their area. So and, and fantastic the offer of going and supporting others, because I think that's one thing I've noticed just being around and being fortunate enough to be around some of the disability football set up in the county is that it's a, it's a real family in terms of how people are supporting each other and offering ideas. And I mean, it's the way it should be. And I think uh, I made a, a huge note it with an exclamation mark where Luke mentioned about um, football in its purest form and I couldn't agree more um, people just enjoying the game for what it is and and everyone with smiles on their faces regardless of who they are so I think that's 
that's what it's all about and hopefully that's the way it should stay as well so anything we can do to support that um, obviously there's lots of different elements that you might require support with some of it might be quite specific so obviously that's where people like uh, Millie and John and other people uh, we do have local football development officers who can provide some support or guidance with regards to funding and things as well that perhaps link to your local authority or active ethics London sport other agencies that may be more local to, to where you are um, so just yeah just very quickly just to run through some of the coaching side of things um, there have been a couple of questions I think Bill uh, from Billonians if you're on mentioned about whether there are specific qualifications um, I think Mason mentioned the chat I can't see it at the moment but around you know kind of specific things to do with coaching so um, there's the start point for anyone uh, in terms of the coaching pathway is the new EE playmaker um, so that is just the entry level for any kind of new volunteer that wants to get into coaching or supporting people that are playing the game regardless of of ability so that that's your start point um, so if you for example uh, take Luke's example of uh, there might be some some parents or carers that would like to get involved or help out uh, and they're really quite new to it and they've just come along with their child for example that's a great opportunity to go great thank you we, we'd love your support um, go and try this it takes about five or six hours to do online um, and you can so you could do it over a couple of sessions you can log in log out as you please and that's free um, so that is a really good one to point in direction so even if you've got an established setup but you've got some people that are perhaps helping out or considering helping out the ones that are starting to edge a bit further closer to the pitch um, that would be a really good opportunity just to send that link out to them and say look give this a go to do what you think and that might that might provide them with a little bit of extra confidence just to step forward um, that then leads into and is a prerequisite to the new or the fairly new it's been around for about a year or so introduction to coaching football um so that is that's replaced the fa level one course uh, so for example mason who i think is on a call it's good to see mason on the call uh took part in a level one as it was before when it was face to face um, and we actually worked alongside the soccer ability league to support some people um, who are working within those teams uh, to get a kind of specific qualification um, with other people that were working in that soccer ability environment which was fantastic and a, a real honor to be part of that so we'd like to try and provide more and more support in that way um, which we'll, we'll, we'll go into a bit more in a minute so yeah the introduction to coaching football course is online um, it takes a bit of time you should probably work on it over about a month's period um, but if you need more information on that we will send out some links post this workshop um, but everything you can, around courses will be found on the FA's boot room site and um, so that's a place to go to, to get the information. Um, the introduction to coaching football does include a, a short 30 minute module around uh, an introduction to coaching uh, table footballers um, and that's just kind of a, a brief introduction but there will be um, some more specific information as John mentioned in the new coach disabled football course um, which is coming out very soon and there'll be opportunities um, hopefully later in the new season to get involved in that and we'll obviously keep you in the loop with that but again information will be added to the boot room as well um, there's also a really useful link. Uh, so John mentioned around the uh, impairment specific side of the game uh, for disability football. There's some 30 seconds to one minute video examples uh, kind of explainers for those, um, which is another link that I've just got uh, sat here that which we can add to that kind of follow up that I guess Millie you'll, you'll be sending out. So we'll make sure that's included in there for sure. Um, I can't see the chat at the moment, so Millie, if there is anything else specific, please do shout. But um, in the meantime, obviously, just as you can see there on the screen, I think hopefully these discussions just start to build a little bit more confidence. Do you know what? Uh, and John mentioned it before, Luke mentioned it, it's, it's not all that different to mainstream football. Uh, and in fact, it's it's sometimes more enjoyable, to be really honest, because people are there just solely for that enjoyment of playing the game and they just want to give it a go. Um, and that can be really refreshing so a nice thing to be involved in if you're already involved in mainstream and you're you know you're you're willing to give up extra time to do this as well it's fantastic um some examples on the call now hashtag and um I think it was tony your club was in west essex area so that's that's really good to hear and i know that millie's been getting a lot of inquiries around clubs that are looking to set up a disability session or a specific section so that's really really good really positive to hear um just to highlight this now and obviously this kind of forms that the start of a potential roadshow I suppose is what we're looking to do so we're looking to run 
at least three, hopefully, um, face to face coaching workshops linked to disability football throughout this coming season. Um, so we'll hopefully get one in, in the early part of the season around perhaps that sort of September, October period, um, maybe even squeezing another one uh, this side of Christmas. Um, but we do we would like to get at least three um, and we'll try to move those all around the county to give opportunities to different people. Um, it may be the first one's fairly central kind of chumps of base to begin with um, and we'll, we'll get we'll to get those dates in the diary as soon as possible and obviously circulate those to, to everyone on here. But also if you could help us to then circulate that further, that'd be really really helpful so that will be more around the kind of practical face-to-face -face coaching support um, and we'll get out on the pitch uh, for as much of that time as possible uh, or in a sports or, or wherever it may be whatever's you know most suitable at the time to show you some practical ideas of some really simple session templates which you can then expand or adapt um, to suit the people that you work with and we'll make sure that we spend some time talking about those elements and how you might do that uh, and essentially for any coach um, working with anybody really you know being able to adapt and uh, suit the needs of the people that are in front of you is probably one of the most important skills or qualities to have so that sometimes just you know just needs people to have a little bit of a nudge or go here's a few ways that you can do it we can provide some examples and then you can run away with a whole host of other things and be really creative which I'm sure many of you will already be doing so yeah hopefully that's an opportunity to get with you know a, a a lot of like-minded people um, and Millie and I were discussing this recently I think it's also a really good opportunity to have kind of a side element to those workshops whereby people that are just interested in getting uh, setting up disability football or perhaps more involved in the organizational side of things can just get together and just you know have a tea coffee and have a chat around disability football or arrange some friendlies or whatever it may be so just creating a more of a network or, or a, a family if you like around people that are want to support disability football so that's what our intentions are and we, we do aim to do three of those during the coming season um, but we would be very open to hearing your thoughts around what specific things you might like support with from the coaching side of things so things like session ideas is the thing that comes up most regularly so we can absolutely do that um, and that then obviously helps to build confidence and things for, for people but if there's anything else specific you know, perhaps pop it in the chat now or we'll send out some information after this as well. Um, I don't know if you wanted to cover anything else, Millie. I think now's just a great time to open the floor up to um, to having a say in those roadshows, as Andy said. So if you've got any further questions that we can either answer now um, or things that we can take forward and utilise um, in our sessions, those roadshows that Andy's um, spoken about, whether that be something you want specific from coaching perspective or um, from, from a different perspective in terms of clubs, parents um, and how you can support going forward. Uh, I can see Kerry or John's got their hand up. Um, how can we help, John? Hi, Millie. Um, obviously, it is this great session. It's great to hear about all the things that are going on there. Obviously, you know my situation in relation to George, who's in a wheelchair. Um, yep. We've had conversations more around um, the power chair football. Um, I'm just wondering how we are with that. And would this be um, something that would be included in those sort of workshops or get togethers, given it's quite specific and along with the um, the, the materials that they need would need to use for them to be able to participate. Yep. So, um, as I said at the um, at the beginning, power chair session is um, developing from last time I saw you. So we are in discussions um, around venues to host, um, and, and these are sort of progressing um, and weekly. We are unfortunately at that time of year where everyone's on annual leave at different times, so um, things obviously will will be sort of slow and moving. But we are um, hopeful that that this session can be kicking off um, in the next season, um, which will be great and a, and a great opportunity because we do have a number of participate. To participants looking um, as I've spoken to you about and for anyone else on the call we we are in a position um, to be looking to sort of set this session up as um, sort of tasting sessions to begin with before making this a sustainable and embedded um, sort of impairment specific um, offer um, in terms of the uh, road shows, there are definitely elements that we are looking to include, and this could be things like including the networking side and um, and the club setup, um, but also um, from Andy's side in terms of um, an creating an inclusive environment from a coaching perspective. And and it, like, whilst our startup sessions will be coached by someone from uh, the wheelchair FA, this doesn't mean that whilst when it becomes sustainable, it will will continue to do that. So having um, coaches um, learning 
learning about power chair football and um, impairment specific at these events will allow us to offer this session for a much longer uh, period and hopefully develop going forward through coaches from Essex specifically. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, just on, and just on that, um, since obviously we've spoken last at the Active Essex um, Day, I've approached um, Nick Hutt, who apparently you, you've either spoken to or met or whatever it is, because he runs the Billericay so Soccerability. And yeah. they are more than happy to be involved um, in sponsoring or any, 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 any side of it possible uh, to help um, the power chair football in the Billericay sort of Essex area. So he's more than happy. Obviously, there's a, there's a soccer ability that goes on, I think, every Saturday morning at Bill Billericay. There is, yes. Yeah, great um, setup. Obviously, he would love to be involved with it. He knows George's story. He's bet both me and Kerry and um, would love to be um, have Billericay involved and sponsor them, give them a kit, whatever they could physically do to help them out and get it on its way. So... Um, Amazing, thank you. I'll pick that up with Nick this week. Thank you for yeah, letting so me know. Yeah, so if you speak to him, he's um just say that me and Kerry. He's already met me and Kerry. And he knows George anyway. So um, but he's more than happy to be involved in anything that he can physically help with. Um, just to, obviously another string to the bow in the soccer ability world. Lovely, that's great. Thank you, John. That's okay. You do you just on that. You'd also be more than welcome to come to any of the uh, the workshops, of course, as well. And and be good just to have that perspective and that discussion around well, how might this be adapted? Because I'm I'm pretty confident that all of the activities that we do will have elements that can be adapted for, for the power oh, chair. No, too. I'd love to come because at the moment I'm, I'm working with Billericay, my youngest. I've got two boys. My youngest is um, 12 and he's already playing for Billericay and I'm just done my playmaker. Um, so, and I've been in football all my life, um, but I'm obviously going to get try and get me level one as well to, to do that. But obviously it just, it's just how you can adapt it for obviously impairment. And obviously George used to play um, power chair football in Watford. Um, but it was too, too far for him to go yeah. um, on a regular basis and, and obviously too costly and everything else. So it's the reason why um, Millie's come up with something in, in the Essex area, um, which would be really, really great um, given his condition. And obviously um, it would just be great for him to be involved in something for not only for his physical, but obviously his mental well-being. Brilliant. Look forward to hearing how it progresses. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I'd, I'd love, to come, love to come and obviously learn some, learn, learn some more skills. Can I just add Hello. that the wheelchair FA do actually run a power chair coaching certificate as well so right. that may be another element you you, you might want to to look into yep. um but as i say um where is that is that on the boot room no so so that is actually face to face and it's generally done as an activity gets up and running so right. to to then coach up and train a number of volunteers um but that is organised through the wheelchair FA and, and Millie. That might be something that, as your provision gets up and running, do you have a word with Adam McAvoy at the wheelchair yeah. FA about? I know they will be, over the course of this season, moving some of the elements as an online course, and they will be on the boot room, but they are not there yet, and it won't be probably towards the end of the season that those elements are added. Right, OK. OK, thank you. No worries. Thank you, John. Um, we've got Mason with a hand up. Hello. Um, nice to see you again, Andy. Um, I, um, I, I just want to say um, about like, like coaching because I, I haven't done anything for like two years now because of um, my Crohn's, which puts me like quite vulnerable. And um, I think I told Andy about that like a few years ago <laughs> um, when I did the course there. But like the last few years have been pretty hard because I, I take... Um, like medication to damage my immune system so I have to be really careful and I want to get back to doing coaching again but it has to be kind of kind of really safe so I want to find kind of a face-to-face -face, like um nearby to do just so I'm like out and about again because it's been it's been it's been hard during that two years. Mason thank you for sharing it's, it's great to see you again and um, I, I think, you know, these these workshops that we've got coming up would be a, a, an ideal opportunity just to reconnect with that a little bit. Um, and obviously we'll make sure that it's as safe as possible too. So um, if you want to reach out separately, um, we can speak over email, I can drop you a call in, you know, next week or so if you'd like. Um, and just to kind of get back on track and see where you're at and what support you might like. And, and obviously to anyone else as well, if they want to reach out to any of us, that's no problem at all. But great to hear you still want to get involved, Mason. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I've I've, I've been wanting to do it for a while, but it's just things like COVID hasn't been a help to to many people. But like having to be careful. I, 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 but but yeah, it'd be good to have like have a call 
and then we can uh, catch up as well. Of course, no problem. Thanks, I Mason. Think, I think Mason picks up a really important point there that COVID has had a disproportional effect on the disability pathway. We're very much in a recovery mode right now, trying to get back what we had before, whereas the male and female pathway are, are, are pretty much back where they were, if not exceeding. So uh, nationally, I think we're about 20% down on where we were two years ago. And that's where we're, we're working really, really hard to get those opportunities up and running. And that's why things like this is so important, getting new clubs involved, getting old activity back up and running and just spreading the word that they, these things are up back. We're building confidence. Not everybody is quite there yet, but um, we, we, we are working to uh, make sure the opportunities are there. So when players do want to come back and play football, that they can. Thank you, everyone. Um, just before we finish up for the evening, has anyone got any other um, questions or things they'd like us specifically to cover when we run our future face-to-face -face sessions, um, especially from that from that club perspective um, or coaching perspective? Because these are the areas where that network and those um, feedback into us in terms of how we structure these sessions is going to be really, um, really beneficial so that we can sort of tailor this to your needs. So Oh, hi, Isla. How are you? I hope you're having a good evening. Um, let's have a look what you've popped. Definitely, there, there's definitely coaching opportunities for you, Isla. Um, 100%. Um, I did speak to your mum a couple of days ago um, before um, the call. So what we'll do is I'll reach out to your mum again um, and we'll definitely we'll, we'll try and place you um, in a group, um, whether that be um, with a club local to you um, or if you're looking to set something up yourself within your local um, sort of um, provisions or group, we'll, we'll find something that suits you best. Um, again, if there's anything in particular that you've heard tonight that, that you're really interested in, in terms of impairment, specific or the leagues or anything like that um, let me know when we speak and we can we can look into that further for you and again Andy will uh, Andy will be able to support like, that coaching thing in terms of ensuring that you're confident going into coaching a group anyone else got any points before we finish up because I am com co uh, aware that we are getting closer and closer to that England kickoff and uh, I don't want to hold anyone up if anyone does have any further questions, because I've not seen anyone popping them anything in, um, please don't hesitate to email me, um, myself or Andy. Um, you can pop a full list of things you'd like us to cover at those roadshow events, whether that be specifics in coaching, specifics in club sections, um, how to embed a team into a mainstream club, um, how to make a decision between going for impairment specific or pan disability. All these sorts of things we can offer um, at these roadshow events. We just need to know what you want most um, to ensure that these sessions are the most useful for you. Um, this is obviously tonight is an introduction to the different areas we're looking to cover and hopefully the start of a very exciting season long programme where we can really offer you um, the best support possible. Now, if you are a club um, that are looking to start disability football or a coach that's not sure um, quite how to, to get involved, please get in touch with us. This is just the start of the support. You can contact us directly or come to the future um, events. We have got your contact details and, and from this, this uh, session, we will be sending out further information and opportunities as they come up. Um, I will just. I think we've got one person typing, so I will just wait on wait one second. Um, Millie, just to just that, yeah, carry on, just, Andy. Just a, as a suggestion, what we'll do when we do a follow up is just put out some potential kind of headers of topics that we could cover in terms of you know whether it's support around match day, whether it's support around planning sessions, or uh, including everyone in your sessions, or making sure that everyone's you know getting as much involved as possible so we we can be quite specific with it um but we can just kick off the first one with some real kind of generic information around lots of different ideas we just show you loads of examples of activities and people can come and get involved and and try it themselves as well so we're more than happy to do that but i think it, it's just good to get started it's good to have so many people on the call as well um and people with lots of energy and enthusiasm that want to get behind disability football so there's already loads going on county wide but i think uh we could be in for some uh in time to head.
Definitely. And I can see there's a few people um, hopefully, hopefully utilising Luke, um, which is great. This is the network we want to create. However, I don't want to overwhelm Luke with um, options. <laughs> so if there is anybody that's looking for someone uh, specific to a certain area, we do have some um, other uh, great disability setups um, that we can link you with more um, local to yourselves. Um, if travel's a bit bit further um, or to save, um, to sort of spread that out and increase the network. So feel free to, to get in touch um, again on that sort of front and uh, I know a few few different disability groups that would be super super um, into getting people involved and, and trying to support each other because as we said this is this is a group of people that are doing something amazing and um, everyone wants to do do the best they can with it so there's always a support network out there for you. Uh, but yeah, just to finish up, thank you again for all joining um, on, on this lovely evening um, and taking some time out of your day to, to hear about what's going on at the moment. Uh, as we said, this is an introduction and we will be following up because we, we want to develop this going forward um, and hopefully make a community programme that we can run every season um, to ensure disability football continues to grow. And thank you to both of our guests, John and Luke, for, for joining us tonight and giving up their time. Um, if you've got any questions specifically for, for either of them from a, a specific perspective, you you can contact Luke or you can get in touch with myself um, and we can we can link you in um, with anything that's going on nationally as well. Um, but again, yeah, thank you very much for joining and, um, and uh, hopefully I'll speak to a lot of you in the near future. Thanks, Billy. Uh, no worries. Take care Thanks of yourselves. Enough, everyone. Thank, you. thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have, Thanks for your time. have a lovely evening. Enjoy the game. Right. See you later. Take care. Thanks, Millie. Uh, I think uh, I'll be coming there.